Hello guys and gals, Buffalo here. I'm trying to find a place down here where I can put my camera and not be in the direct sunlight. I had, a, I had it set up over there earlier and it just uh, you know, it whited everything out, blowed everything out. But I think, I think this might work. But I wanted to talk to you guys today and, and put together a little video basically talking about a video that I done before. I guess you'd call it a follow up or an update. But a while back, it was earlier this year, I posted a video on a friend of mine's Ruger American Predator bolt action rifle. Uh, kind of done an initial impressions video. It wasn't really a review video because I hadn't even shot it when I started the video. I went through the features and stuff of the rifle and then shot it toward the end of the video. And I had some negative things to say about that gun. The stock was uh, subpar. It was a it was a flimsy, cheap stock couldn't get any cheek weld whatsoever. It was a package gun, keep that in mind. It, it came with a scope already mounted, no iron sights, ready to go, you know, ready to go sight it in and, and go deer hunting. But uh, there was no way you could get a cheek weld. The stock comb was way down here when you were looking through the scope. It was like the stock was set up for iron sights, yet the gun came as a package gun with a scope mounted on it. So I kind of complained about that a little bit. I complained about how flimsy the stock was with the slightest pressure, even from like using a hasty style sling, you could pull the stock into the, into the barrel and you didn't, you kind of lose your free float that way. You know, if your stock's touching the barrel, it's not really a free, a free floated barrel. So I said all that. And then of course, by the end of the video, a lot of people didn't watch it all the way through. They just watched me say that and, and went straight to the comments and just got all over me for hating on Ruger. I don't hate on Ruger. I love Ruger. Uh, Ruger is a great company. They've always taken good care of me. I've taken in used guns. I've taken in guns on trade and had problems with them. And, you know, the Rugers, I can always contact Ruger, and they have always taken good care of me. And almost anybody I talk to will tell you the same thing. I'm a fan of Ruger, so... That doesn't mean just because I'm a fan of them that, that I can't criticize something. I understand what they did. With that American series, they're competing with the savage axes of the world. So you're going to have to cut corners somewhere, and Ruger chose to do it with the stock, at least a large portion of it. But today I wanted to show you guys what my friend done, what his solution was. A lot of you guys left comments and said, you know, uh, and agreed with me, uh, uh, more than didn't agree, did agree with me. So it, it is definitely an issue. And a lot of you guys were telling me how you had built up the comb of your stock with different things, uh, aftermarket pieces that you made work and things like that. People were talking about how they cut the ribs out of the stock and use different epoxies and things to stiffen the stock up. And, you know, a lot of great solutions out there. And, and that's a good thing. You know, you want the rifle, you need a good stock if you want your rifle to shoot well. That one, by some miracle, is still shot great anyway. Those, in that video, that was the first shots that rifle had ever had through it. That's why I was so excited when it shot as well as it did. It wasn't like it was a rifle that I had worked with before and it hadn't, hadn't even been fired before other than being test fired probably at the factory. So, uh, you want your stock to be good. You gotta do whatever you gotta do to make it work. I'll show you what my friend done with his. So I've got the gun back over here again today, and he chose to put one of these Magpul Hunter stocks on it. And you talk about making a difference, guys. This makes, it feels like a totally different rifle. Uh, again, I know why Ruger done what they did. They, they're a company. They've got to make money. They've got to stay in business. And it's our fault, you know, that, that these companies are giving us these cheap-made rifles. We're, we're constantly demanding cheaper and cheaper goods and cheaper rifles and this and that and if they want to sell if they don't want the savage axis to have all of that market share then they're going to have to cut corners and compete too so i wouldn't hate on ruger at all back to this thing though this thing makes it feel like a real rifle rather than just uh, some kind of an airsoft or a toy rifle now it feels like a real rifle see the free floating they've done on this one on this stock this stock is a little flexible too don't get me wrong you can move this stock around but you're not going to come in contact with that barrel like 
I was able to with that factory stock. And that's got, that's got a quarter inch of clearance all the way around the barrel. I know you can't see it probably on that camera, but it's got a quarter inch of clearance or more all the way around the barrel. You're not gonna, you're not gonna pull that into the barrel with your, with your sling or anything else you're using. Cheek riser, this was the most important thing to me. This is the medium height. You can get different heights. I think it. Uh, I think they offer three or four different heights for this thing. Uh, this one come with the medium height, and it puts me dead where my cheek. I've got a really good cheek weld, and I'm looking dead through the center of that scope. So huge difference. Huge difference there. You want a good cheek weld to be able to shoot well. That does it. Adjustable length of pull. You can use these spacers. You can add spacers or take them away and adjust the, the length of pull, which is from the from the back of the gun here to the trigger. You can adjust that from 13 to 15 inches, so enough adjustment there to fit probably 90, 95% of all shooters, uh, unless you're just uh, wanting a, for a youth or something like that, and then you need to be looking at a youth gun anyway or a youth size stock, but this should fit most adults has an aluminum bedding block in here with steel lugs where the action screws go through so you don't need to bed this stock it's, it should be a good solid lock up got m lock slots all the way around the gun bottom and both sides now he's got a codwell bipod here on the bottom so you can't you can't see them on there but they're there and he's used a on the left side here, he's used one of the slots to put a M lock quick detach for his sling. And the sling on the stock here, you've got an option on either side. He's using this side, you've got this side still open, of course. And you've also got uh, pre laid out drill points. If you want to put in traditional style sling swivels, you can drill these. Uh, pre-marked points out and can't see them up here because he's got that uh, bipod on but but they're there ergonomics on this thing fantastic the pistol grip got texture all the way around it good grip texture and just the ergonomics is just great on this thing comes with the mag wheel so you can use the AICS style magazines Now I did read something on their website that some of these calibers like this one, it actually mentioned the 6.5 Creedmoor, which is what this one is chambered in, is uh, some of the earlier magazines with the green floor plate lock might not function perfectly with calibers like the 6.5 Creedmoor. Be fine with the 308, but some of the other calibers may not function with. So you want to make sure you're using the uh, newer Magazines with the brown uh, floor plate lock on them Comes with this one. It came with this uh, this five round magazine so uh, th And that's a big upgrade over that little flimsy uh, Factory supplied uh, Ruger magazine that came with that other stock a Huge upgrade to be able to grab these magazines and go with it Everything else is still stock the only thing you changed was the stock, but it completely changed this rifle Still got the package gun scope, which is a vortex crossfire, uh, rings, the mount, all that came from Ruger as the package gun. It wouldn't be a complete video if we didn't shoot a group. So I've got us a two inch dot set up down there at 100 yards. We'll shoot a five shot group just see how this handles now do got a little bit of a wind crosswind blowing here coming across from my left to right at 100 yards though i don't think it'll amount to much
through the scope looks like I'm just a little bit high which it should be uh, the way he's got it zeroed let's go down and check it out all right let's see what we've got that's pretty dang good that's five shots into about a half an inch at 100 yards with factory loaded ammunition you can't hardly you know <laughs> anything you know that's as good as i can hold that's all there is to it the rifle may shoot better than that with that ammo but that's about as good as i can hold it shooting off that little bipod but you can see ah sorry about the camera maybe just a touch more than a half an inch if so not much pretty good now some of you guys that don't know anything about hunting may look at this and say well yeah but you know you missed the bullseye he sighted in intentionally high at 100 he wants his point blank range as far out as he can get it so he's sighted in a little high here and we did have a crosswind blowing, <clears throat> blowing from left to right that may be why my shots are favoring right just a little bit either way I wouldn't move it that looks good As always, I do have a backstop that I'm shooting into. But I'm also, you, some of you guys may have heard the steel ring when the bullets hit. You can see all the ground messed up right there. When those bullets hit that steel, they disintegrate. I like to disintegrate the bullet. Even though it's going into a backstop, I like to disintegrate the bullet as soon as I'm done with it. And I'm done with it the minute it pierces a hole in this paper. So here's that ammo. Federal Premium. Law Enforcement Tactical Tip Match King, 140 grain. Does really good for a, a factory loaded round. It is a polymer tipped bullet, the blue tip on it. These things aren't cheap. They run about $299, I believe, in most cases. But I'm telling you, if you've got one of those Ruger American rifles that this stock will work on, it'll be the best $299 that you could spend on that rifle, in my opinion. But that's all I've got, really. I'll talk with you guys again soon.